What's up, wise guys? So most of you probably don't know this, but because I keep moving around so much with this channel, I keep most of my gear in my trunk. Now, of course, it's not a perfect solution, but it works pretty well for me. The only thing is, it's gotten a little bit out of hand recently. There's kind of just random crap everywhere. So today, I'm gonna take this time to reorganize my trunk. So I figured while I'm cleaning it out today, I would give you guys a list of the top five tools that I always carry around in my car for any project I'm working on. Now, if you guys are interested and you wanna pick any of these things up yourself, I'm gonna leave some links down below to places that you can get it. With that said, let's get into the video. All right, so this is everything that managed to fit in my trunk. I'm gonna go through this first, then I'll go through my top five tools. Then we're gonna reorganize and I'll show you what I did. So I found these pieces of a barbecue lighter. If you uh, adjust the fuel amount that comes out, you can get the pretty sick flame. Here, check this out. Look at that. I wonder what happens if I take it all the way out. I guess it all just comes out of this little hole, so. Well, now that that's over, let's talk about my top five tools. In no particular order, let's just go down the line. First off, because I use it most recently, are these. This is my pair of digital calipers. They are indispensable for any kind of modeling application. What they're useful for is measuring anything of a small size. Now, I probably would have put a ruler in here. These tend to be more helpful because you can get a more exact size. So I would say that they are an indispensable thing to add to any kit of tools. Now, you don't have to go all out on these. Um, I know you can go and buy, you know, some crazy expensive Me Too Toyo calipers. I just got what was reasonable from Amazon. Again, I'll link these down below, but they worked really well for me and I had no problems. So second up here is gonna be this guy. This is a hot glue gun. It's a high temperature hot glue gun specifically. Low temperature doesn't usually result in a firm enough bond for most applications. Right? Not to mention if you're using one of the dinky craft glue guns, those just aren't gonna give you enough heat to really work with the glue. Now you can get really cheap glue guns and you can get really expensive glue guns. I have never spent more than 20 bucks for a glue gun, but I'm looking into getting a new glue gun right now. I don't know, I might try to do a glue gun shootout. I get a bunch of people to send me them and see which ones are good and which ones suck. I don't know, let me know down in the comments if that's something you'd like to see. So we can measure stuff, we can put it together. What else can we do? A basic Dremel kit is really handy. I worked on projects for an entire summer with pretty much nothing except for a Dremel and a glue gun. And there's, there's honestly a ton you can do with it. If you need to make some simple holes in thin material, you can manage to do that with a Dremel. If you need to cut material, you can do that with a Dremel. I find myself again and again reaching to pull this guy out on almost every project, regardless of application. I highly recommend it, and in fact, I recommend getting a good one. And I actually recommend getting a corded one. They make some that are cordless. I have a cordless one as well. Uh, but I use this one all the time because it's a pain to have to charge your Dremel all the time. It's great to have it charged all the time. So if you're in one shop location all the time, you can use a wireless cordless one and it's great. This is better for like day-to-day -day use. Fourth item on the list is a good drill. Now, a drill can do a lot. You can see that right now I've got a screwdriver tip fitted to it. So a good corded drill like this one will provide a ton of torque for not that much money, where a cordless drill to get the same kind of performance might cost you a little bit more. If you have the money to blow, definitely go cordless, but get something good. And last but not least on this list is a decent soldering station. Now, I don't say a soldering iron, and the reason is a soldering station makes your life a lot easier. They're a little bit more expensive than just the bare iron, but I find that it's really worth it. This isn't a particularly expensive model. This is just, I think this was maybe 30 or 40 bucks, but it has served me pretty well. I've used the Heiko. The Heiko is great, but the Heiko is about $100. So either way is a good way to go, but this guy is great. This one in particular has a really fat tip. Um, so it holds a lot of heat. The thing that's great about the Heiko is that if you care about this sort of thing, you can see exactly what temperature, but on this guy, uh, it just has a dial with intensity levels of like one to five. Definitely something that I would recommend keeping in your toolkit, really good for electronics projects, anything where you're just trying to put a bunch of wires together really. And I mean, that's pretty much it. Those are the five things that I would recommend that pretty much everyone have. 
uh, for working on projects. There are a lot of things I'd love to add here. All of these are really helpful tools, but if I had to boil it down to five, these are the five I would go with. All right, let me finish putting all the rest of this crap back in my car, and then I'll show you the final result. Alrighty guys, so this took most of the afternoon, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. Let me show you, it looks way better than before. I'll try to do some kind of a before and after on screen, but now I have everything organized in a way that makes sense. We got all the acrylic spray paint right here. There is kind of like Rust-Oleum oil spray paint in the back in there. In here are my main tools that I work with and the toolbox. The stuff in that, these back boxes where I keep my electronic stuff and drafting paper. Then this is camera gear, this is Tyvek. We got camera gear, small tools and miscellaneous items. And over here, we got our power cords um, and the project that I'm currently working on. That's in its own bag, because it is. All in all though, I think it looks a lot better than before and I hope you guys like the list of my top five items that I always have with me. I'll see you guys in like a week and a half with the next big video. If you like this video and you wanna support more stuff like this, uh, you can click over here to check out my Patreon. You can click another video right over here and subscribe down below and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, peace.